there is no reflection. A swollen face, all puffed up. Red, bloodshot eyes. Eyes that are too ashamed to look at their own reflection. With great difficulty, I look up and see a shadow of a woman, a girl, a nobody. Blue, grey, red skin. The stress is aging her before her time. How sad. What heavy lids, weighed down by the sadness, the silence, the pain. When will it stop? When will it go away? So tired. Who is that stranger looking back at me, vacant, gaunt, grey? I wonder if the real me has gone forever. I cannot see her in the mirror. She must be dead. I met him at university when I was studying abroad in Italy. He was tall, dark and handsome, a charming Brazilian artist. It wasn't hard for me to become head over heels with him very, very quickly. I grew up in a big loving family. I had the privilege of receiving a private education. I have open-minded, easygoing parents. I have amazing friends. I've always been a very caring, sociable and creative person. I've had many open doors in my life. I've been very lucky. And I suppose I had the normal ups and downs, the hopes and insecurities of a 21-year-old. But overall, I would say my life was pretty great. He was a bit moody, a bit jealous, and he liked to have things his own way. But I was in love. I was often confused by this behavior, but for some reason, so desperate for him to like me and stay with me that I ended up deleting Facebook. I dropped my male friends, and I changed my behavior to meet his expectations. When he wasn't being difficult, we had a great time together. There was lots of chemistry between us, and I was hooked. I moved out with him to Brazil. I put the increasingly confusing behavior, subtle criticisms, put-downs, silent treatment, I put this behavior down to cultural differences and needing to learn better Portuguese. I called a friend and cried that sometimes we just didn't really get each other. I made excuses for his actions in my head. He's just different. He has a strong character. I'm the only one who really understands him. I pushed my gut feelings aside. I pushed them far down, and I married him. Over the next four years, I endured emotional, psychological and physical abuse with this man that I selflessly loved and whom I believed loved me back. It's important to understand that an abusive relationship doesn't start by being told that you're stupid or incapable or a whore on a daily basis. Nor does it start with being hit in the face for daring to look at another man for trying to cross the road. To get to that point, the abuser has gradually chipped away at the person's self-esteem, their self-worth, their self-belief convincing them that they are culpable and responsible for the abusive actions. They have gradually isolated you from your friends and family, and they make you believe that the only world that is real and that matters is the private world that you share together. In my case, this was done side by side, by being made to feel very desired, needed, and generally feeling lots of intense emotions. So the good times were very high, and the bad times got gradually lower and lower. 2013 was the worst year of my life. I was absolutely convinced that the whole thing was my fault and that I needed to fix it to make the problems go away. I was deeply ashamed and I hid my reality from everyone and myself. By this point, my self-esteem had become eroded to non-existence. Simple decisions had become impossible because everything I did was wrong in his eyes. I had become an underweight, sad shadow of my former self. I was also so brainwashed that I didn't even realize how serious the abuse was becoming. In fact, I didn't even realize I was being abused. I was pushed around, hit, pinched, spat at in my face. He perforated my eardrum, 
He broke bones in my foot. I had bruises on my arms, my legs, my ears and my neck. He strangled me more than once. One time, when he injured his arm, I brushed his hair wrong, so he hit me across the face. He would remove his ring, so to bruise me less. When you endure so much violence on a daily basis or on a regular basis, and also in such an unpredictable way, it makes you feel physically and mentally exhausted, drained. It wipes you out. You just try to hide the evidence and get through each day as normally as possible until you realize that you just don't know what normal is anymore. But I did start to realize that there was something wrong. I searched online for relationship problems, and I eventually called the UK National Charity for Domestic Abuse, Women's Aid. They pointed out the real danger that my life was in. I heard them, and the obvious conclusion would be for me to leave, right? But for me, that was out of the question. I felt even more responsible for him now that he was injured. And in any case, when I did try to stand up for myself, he accused me of abandoning him in his time of need. I was afraid, and my life felt like a prison with no way out. We went back to Brazil, me, him, and my little dog. I was once again on the other side of the world, now even more isolated and, and removed from my friends and family. I had begun processing the idea of leaving, but was still so unsure of how it could happen. One evening, in a Skype call with my auntie, I asked her about a bad relationship she had had in her youth. I was silently screaming for help. She saw me jump when I thought the door go, and she asked me directly, are you afraid of him? Has he ever hit you? This was my opportunity, and now I felt ready. After months of internalizing and trying to build up the courage and the strength, I said the words out loud, and I broke my silence. I was being abused. As soon as I had told my auntie, my entire family knew that I needed to get home. Operation Escape started. My cousin, she said she could get me on a, on a flight within a couple of days, but it wasn't going to be that easy. I couldn't just pack my bags and leave. Although my auntie had warned me that statistically, leaving an abusive relationship is the most dangerous time, I just could not leave him in secret. I felt that if I did, I would be confirming to him all of his accusations of me that I was a liar and a cheat. Plus, I was sure he considered his reputation to be too important to really hurt me. In a practical sense, I also had no money left. I'd maxed out my credit card, I'd gone to the end of my overdraft, and I'd spent the last of my savings. My parents and my best friend offered to pay for everything to get me home. So this all took several weeks to organize, in which time he suddenly became nice again. He took me out for meals and gave me attention as if nothing bad had ever happened between us. There was no physical violence. This may be difficult to understand, but it was so confusing for me that I almost wish he would hit me again so I had a tangible reason to leave him. I vividly remember him asking me if I was really sure I wanted to leave. I remember then saying to my sister, am I doing the right thing? He told me that I would never find anyone like him ever again. And she replied, why would you want to? I look back, and it still amazes me that my reality regressed to this point where I was brainwashed to, be completely, to feel completely worthless and stupid and incapable, my self-esteem gone. When you hear the same negative rhetoric day in, day out, gradually getting more and more negative, you start to believe it and absorb it until you are completely overtaken by it. Abusers know exactly what they are doing. Abuse is about control. And I was really made to believe that everything was my fault. Even though I was deeply unhappy, leaving was one of the hardest things I have ever done. 
but I left. I flew eight... <laughs> I left. I flew 8,000 kilometers home with nothing but my suitcase and my dog. I reclaimed my freedom. In the last four and a half years since leaving, I have completely rebuilt my life. I just threw myself at every opportunity because I had nothing left to lose. I reconnected with old friends. I made lots of new friends. I found a great job. I rediscovered my voice. I needed lots of hours of therapy and even medication. I learned to love myself and rebuild my boundaries. I even met the real love of my life. And I am flourishing. <laughs> I know myself. I now realize I am brave, I am worthwhile, and that I am not to blame for what I went through. I left on a Tuesday. Tears fell uncontrollably. They were big, wet, heavy tears. Tears that I shed out of exhaustion, pain, the sheer enormity of my actions. I was leaving. I left on a Tuesday. Stepping on the plane, I turned my back on it all. I had nothing left to lose. I was zeroed, empty, no more. I left on a Tuesday. The courage was built slowly, and not always so surely, and it had taken months to get to this. But the courage was built slowly and not always so surely, but enough to make sure that I faced this new direction. With each kilometer that passed, I was further away. I would be safe. I left on a Tuesday. When I arrived, it was Wednesday, and my new life began. <laughs>